Uh, first, I'd like to say thank you for having me here and for all of your many, many efforts to make this volume come together. Um, and I know he's not here today, but Michael Saltzman um, was generous enough to visit my studio for a very long time um, when he was putting his essay together and wrote a really phenomenal essay, and I hope you'll take the time to read it. I'm going to speak to you for a few moments about my artwork. Um, the uh, first uh, group of works that I'm going to talk about are not on view uh, here, but they give you sort of an idea of where uh, I'm coming from as I moved into, into this series. So, For some time, my work has engaged with issues of power, as manifested in the realms of war, politics, and social experience. These are subjects that tend to make people uncomfortable for obvious reasons. Um, and as a painter, I've pursued a strategy of establishing a certain distance uh, between the viewer and the subject of the painting. This process has involved first constructing a model scenario, photographing it, and then finally painting from this arrested or still image. I'm careful to include the telltale signs of the model's inaccuracies and also of the camera's eye as these pictorial imperfections are the images tell um, and consequently are a key element of the work's content. An earlier series entitled From Here employs the, na the naive language of toys, models, and plastic dolls uh, to investigate the unsettling realm of international political conflict. Many Americans have experienced events in Iraq, for example, solely through imagery mediated by news outlets uh, or other systems uh, that filter uh, the uh, original facts. Um, these paintings replicate this process of filtration and the inevitable simplification and distortion uh, of facts as real world signifiers are transformed from one medium into uh, the next, from the model into the photograph into the painting. Seen from the safe distance uh, of our homes, for example, watching on television, imagery of the war has elicited a range of responses, including, for example, um, voyeurism, uh, apathy, denial, self-concern, and of course, I'm sure we all feel the impotent compassion um, that we can't actually do anything. Uh, the conflict there is clearly far from over, uh, even though the war is technically uh, ended. Um, but as our soldiers and correspondents return, the war also comes home, along with a multiplicity of painful struggles that will remain with us for many years. Um, those paintings examine some of the many ways in which Americans have experienced the Iraq War. So model figures, toy dolls represent the housewife, the student, the businessman, the soldier, uh, all occupying an uneasy utopia uh, of a model world. External signifiers suggesting a greater embattled reality interrupt this world and impose themselves on the viewer. As this body of work uh, drew to a close, I received a grant to travel to Istanbul, Turkey, here I was able to photograph existing scale models at Miniaturk, a theme park housing scale models of significant structures from across the Anatolian Peninsula and the former Ottoman uh, Empire. The images that I made there form the basis of Sites of Power, a series I began work on in 2010. These paintings continue to address issues of power, but in a more elliptical manner than the previous work did, exploring various facets of abstraction, the concept of architectural power and the ways in which this power affects, shapes, and mirrors human experience. As I mentioned a moment ago, these paintings are based on my photographs of existing scale models. These are not models that I built myself. And the distortion that occurs as the imagery is translated from one medium to another remains significant. The real endures a substantial filtration process and the viewer's relationship, it relationship with it becomes estranged. While from here, the earlier series I described a moment ago, addresses issues of power and powerlessness as manifested in human interaction during wartime, Sites of Power uh, is an exploration of built structures in which abstract power is embodied or performed. These sites belong to a variety of domains, such as politics, military, commerce, learning, and religion. Rendered photographically, but with severe cropping and awkward perspective, the images are reduced to formal composition, pattern, and color, remaining only minimally recognizable. These quasi-abstract paintings return the reified concept of power to an abstract state, denuding the structures of the power they once wielded. Further erosion occurs as plaster, 
I'm sorry, further erosion occurs as moments of material imperfection are highlighted, cracks in plaster, astroturf that is curling up from its substrate, water stains on tarmac. An element of human frailty and disintegration is thus introduced to the otherwise flawless model. Additionally, the painting's photographic references suggest a place one could visit, but the high point of view discomforts the viewer, leaving her unsure how to physically relate to the space and producing unease as she attempts to navigate these abstract power structures. Over the millennia, humans have made a habit of producing grand structures with which to proclaim their power, wealth, status, and knowledge. These structures serve a performative function in that they exert a significant influence over the behavior of great masses of people. But when the building blocks are viewed up close, the, in the intended intimidating effect begins to break down. The stone becomes simply a stone. It may even have a few cracks in it or support a growth of mildew. With these paintings, I hope to demonstrate this phenomenon further by taking as my source material not real grand buildings, but instead photographs of scale models of real grand buildings. In presenting a miniature facsimile, models tame and unhand the mighty. And when these tamed structures are photographed, they become souvenirs that literally fit in the pocket or in the palm of one's hands. The vanity of one's attempt to mark, to make a mark on the world is laid bare. Decline in the eventual return to abstract form is the inevitable fate of any endeavor. In choosing my compositions, I'm guided by two major concerns. I'm interested in how framing can, by eliminating recognizable features, further erode the influence of the iconic and separate it into abstract components. The formal arrangement of shapes, colors, and pattern has become more important to me uh, than ever before. I'm also interested in capturing moments of distress or vulnerability, where, for example, plaster has chipped or grit has accumulated. These passages serve two functions. As I mentioned earlier, they are the tell, the clue that what is before us is not as straightforward as it might otherwise seem. For many, these moments trigger the realization that the subject is, <clears throat> in fact, a model, a fake. Such details simultaneously intimate <clears throat> that all is not right with this model world, despite being an idyllic representation of the real decay encroaches. The work thus speaks to the inevitability of degeneration <clears throat> as an effect of time and the subsequent experience of pathos. Cracks, stains, peeling paper, and unsatisfactory repair, for example, are all on display for examination, on display for judgment, comparison, perhaps even a source of, co of solace. These paintings probe the fault lines in our human obsession with power and progress, the numbing repetition of labor, and the inevitable decline of the corporeal. Given this seeming futility, the necessary question becomes, why do we get up in the morning? The decision to do in spite of an awareness of utter futility, this is the bravest decision I can imagine. Not necessarily cheerful, but brave and true. Ultimately, this is what I find so compelling about a small segment of a dirty and crumbling model of a building, which was itself once a projection of strength. In this way, these paintings share something with Northern European Vanitas paintings of the 17th century. Regardless of the force of one's ambition or the influence one has amassed, human endeavors are frail and will eventually be dismantled or eroded.